I feel the need, the need for speed. That's right. Hey, everybody. It's Sean here with my friend Jordan, my brother Tony. We just got in of an early screening of Top Gun Maverick. As you can see, we're all decked out. The theater was even so kind enough to give us these collectible pins and these awesome posters. And uh, we were treated to a, a pretty freaking awesome movie, by the way. Uh, this is an actually, this this Top Gun sequel took, what, like 36 years? Yeah, it's, 86 uh, to 2022. Yeah, because like I said, it was originally supposed to be like 2020, and then it got delayed 2021, it got delayed again. But uh, it was worth the wait, I feel like. Um, this is a better movie than the original Top Gun. I mean, I went to the theater all decked out in my little Maverick gear, got the aviators on. Uh, you got the aviators, you got the aviators. You have to go see a Top Gun movie wearing aviators, and of course there's other... By the glasses, it really enhances the experience. It, it absolutely does. There's I mean, a free plug at Ray-Ban, but you can send us glasses anyways. Exactly. <laughs> Be sure to purchase your uh, Ray-Ban sunglasses. I spent like $200 on these. <laughs> these are prescriptions, baby. You don't want to look in them. <laughs> right, and you just borrowed a pair, but you know what? That's okay. <laughs> Somebody paid for them on... Um, uh, but yeah, this is an amazing movie. Um, this one's directed by Joseph Kosinski. Uh, Tom Cruise is back as uh, Pete Maverick Mitchell. And um, the only other returning character this time around is, well, there is a returning character that's like a, played by a different actor. But the only other returning character is Val Kilmer, of course, as Iceman, who has a limited role given Val Kilmer's health issues, which they do incorporate into the plot. But he does play, have a, a key scene in the movie, and his influence is felt throughout the movie. Like, it was nice to see Val Kilmer again, because, like, I've been a big Val Kilmer fan. It's really unfortunate what he was going through health-wise. Um, but it's still cool to see him on the big screen again, playing opposite Tom Cruise. Like, there was, it was a nice touching uh, scene that they share together. But anyways, so this one is set, uh, 30 years later, Maverick is somebody who's still kind of a bit of a lone wolf. Um, he's still, you know, he's still Maverick, so he still does some shit that gets him into trouble constantly. Um, he's a little bit more mature than he was. He's not as arrogant, but he still likes to get into mischief because, well, well he's pretty he, arrogant. <laughs> well, yeah, okay. He is pretty arrogant, but he's not as arrogant as he was in the first movie. Like, um, he definitely like has closer connections with people like, um, to Iceman and that, like he does risky things but he does it for the greater good instead of necessarily all for selfish reasons yeah he does some stuff like you know buzzing the tower and all that there's some throwback there's some callbacks to the first top gun movie um the opening credits and that is a straight callback to the original top gun um down to the music they play highway to the danger zone they got the top gun theme in there uh there's nods and easter eggs like um there's flashbacks kind of flashbacks the movie. too using old footage uh great balls of fire is played uh, they play some other rock songs sprinkled in throughout there. Um, David Bowie, yep. Let's Dance. Yeah, like I said, there's some great music. Then you have the new song by Lady Gaga over the credits. Um, not as good as Take Your Breath Away, or Take My Breath Away, which is still pretty iconic. But, I mean, like I said, you still get rid of it. But the main draw to this movie uh, is the uh, aerial photography, I should say, the aerial sequences. See, what they did with this movie is they filmed it really all practically. I'm sure there's some CGI enhancements here and there for certain bits, but they actually strapped the cameras to these planes to really simulate the experience of, like, really feeling like you're there. Now, we saw this in IMAX, and it was spectacular to watch. Like, the, the, the third act is amazing. It, like, because I know Christopher Aquari did some, like, scripts, uh, wrote part of the screenplay, and you can tell because he's been uh, working on the last couple of Mission Impossible movies with Tom Cruise, so those two are just, you know, neck and neck working together on a lot of things and you could like the third act is like some crazy ass mission that they have to do and it was going in directions that i didn't necessarily uh expect it to go um in terms of like how it was because like the first top gun it's like you know just a bit of a competition and then they were like the last couple of minutes like oh let's just throw a little battle in some migs baby some migs at the very end this thing it really ups the ante and it's spectacular like those like the way they're flying through the things like because it was filmed practically you really feel the danger involved with the actors and you're know, like is someone just gonna die during the middle of this like scene because it's like it's all real like i feel the intensity more than i would just somebody on a little green screen uh background going <laughs> so i appreciated that like it really simulates the experience of flying there and it was spectacular like it, you're gonna be like on the edge of your seat for the third act uh second act it's a little bit slow and the opening act is pretty solid too with maverick testing out like uh, this plane and pushing it to like Mach 10 and that and just uh, there's some good humor in that with uh, that good too. humor really throughout the whole movie right 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 it's, it's nice humor um, I mean there's some the, the original Top Gun is very cheesy uh, let, let's let's be honest uh, but that's kind of why a lot of people love it like there's a lot of like ridiculous stuff in there 
Um, I, I think the one thing the original Top Gun does have over this one is the uh, the actual Top Gun students are more memorable in the first movie. Now, I mean, we obviously follow Maverick, um, but like you don't have like an Iceman. Or a, a, oh, Hangman's pretty, pretty Iceman. Okay, like Hangman is not nearly as cool. He's supposed to be like him. He, well, Iceman at least had legitimate, like, reasons to, like, get annoyed with Maverick. Because he's just like, no, 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 you're going to screw me over. You're like, you're, you're very dangerous up in the air. And well, he, those were all very fair points. Yeah, like, Iceman was perfectly legitimate. Hangman just has the most punchable face out of <laughs> anybody I've ever seen. Like, I'm like, my God, like, I don't think I've ever wanted to punch somebody in the face more. Just by this guy's face. I mean, just... I mean, kudos to the actor, like, but, like, you just have a really punchable face. Um, so, yeah, I'll say that. Um, what did you guys think of the movie? I feel like I've talked so much because I'm just, like, so amped up and excited. I got my <laughs> aviators on and my Top Gun jacket yeah. and my white T-shirt, of course. You, you know, the first thing that came to mind is, like, there, there's a lot of fan service in this movie, right? And when I saw this, I'm like, you know who needs to watch this movie? Disney. And learn how to do fan service so we avoid disasters. Like, episode 8, The Last Jedi. And if you didn't see that plug coming, I mean, you know, God bless you at every this point. Time, but... <laughs> every single time, every single time he's going to plug that movie. No, this, is, this was really good. Um, and you're somebody who doesn't really love the first Top Gun, right? Yeah, you know, I saw, I watched it last night. And I was like, yeah, this is kind of a kind of average movie. But, um, yeah, no, they, they toned down the cheesiness to it a bit. They still have, you know, a volleyball type scene in the which, movie. I, which makes no sense. Like, they're playing offense and defense at the same time. Like, who's keeping score? How does it work? I don't know. At least well, they even admit the rules don't really make a lot of sense. <laughs> right, right, right. It's just a team bonding exercise, I guess. Yeah, um, yeah and, uh, well, the, yeah, there, you know, there's actual drama between the characters, too, in this, like Goose and, um... Rooster. Ro or, yeah, Rooster. Rooster is Goose's son. Rooster is Goose's son. So that Miles Teller. Um, and you can clearly tell... You know, I, one of the underlying themes, right? I guess we're going to get probably more spoilery at this point. Um, yeah, but like like I said, um, I guess spoilers from this point on out. Um, go see the movie. Uh, it's opening this week here in the States. Uh, see it on the biggest screen possible. You're going to want to get that IMAX experience. Yeah, it, really, the... it really enhances it. Um, I mean, Tom Cruise was smart to hold this thing out. Like, I, You know what? I'll say this. Tom Cruise may be kind of crazy. Um, he's dedicated. He is committed to like his art. Like that man is like goes to extra lengths that very few actors would dare to do. The only one I can think of would maybe be Jackie Chan. Um, because Jackie Chan, like, I mean, they didn't have the safety protocols like they do here. But Tom Cruise is committed to really making things practical and feel real. I mean, the new Mission Impossible movie, he's jumping off a cliff with a motorcycle and a parachute himself, and this one he's like all the way up there in the planes. Like, this is a great film if you're like an aviation nut um, yeah because the beginning of the movie too they even put the disclaimer right you know tom cruise comes out thanks everyone and says these are real g's you know right real really feel the experience yeah. and like he's right he is 100 percent right you feel the experience more so um no there's drama really throughout this movie um i i don't think you'll be bored even act two which is the slower of the act there's still you know long sequences of training and right. drama and things going wrong too Right, the, the um, flight sequence is like they, they're very exciting to watch. Yeah. Um, like, cause, like I said, because the way the cameras are positioned, the way they are with the actors and that, and just kind of flying around. Like, I'm like, and just like, oh shoot! Like, like when a, when a camera does like a nose when you're doing a nose dive and all this stuff, I'm just sitting there like, ooh, like I really feel like somebody's going to just <laughs> so at any moment. Yeah, and I, I think what I liked about this movie too. You're right. The first movie, you're right, is mostly focusing on them just kind of training and competing with each other, and they fill the mission at the end. Um, this movie, the whole thing is building towards an end climax, right? Right, because it's a secret mission that they have to do, and they have, like, uh, enemy bogeys that they have to fight. It feels like something straight out of, what is it, Ace Combat? Uh, yep. Yeah, I mean, you, you, I mean, I played Ace Combat. You've played more Ace Combat than me. Like, what did you think of the movie overall? I mean, you've been pretty quiet back there, so, because um, I've been pretty loud. Uh, quite a solid movie. It doesn't just feel like uh, any ordinary sequel. It feels like it has a purpose. And it even does the impossible and surpasses the original. Yeah, yeah. I, like I said, I think this one's a superior movie to the original. The, the original is still an iconic '80s like uh, movie. Like it's the soundtrack's iconic. Like I mean, the characters you all remember the moments. You can be my wingman anytime. <laughs> Bullshit. You can be mine. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there, there's still some cheesiness, but it is toned down, I think. Right, right, right. Like I said, the, the newer the newer uh, pilots, they're not quite as memorable as the ones in the 80s, but the 80s ones are also over ton and cheesy. Because um, there's like 12 pilots in this. You only really right. hear like six of them talk. Right, There's there's there was quite a bit. And like I said, it's a bit of, it's Top Gun, so it's a bit of a competition. 
and they're trying to narrow it down for like the pilots in the mission and only like a few of them really stand out like you have rooster and then you have uh hangman because he's got the most punchable face then there's bob that's literally just his name is just bob uh then there's the girl which i can't and there was like coyote and some like oh, phoenix, phoenix 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 okay yeah Phoenix. No one knows any of the, the characters' names, really, do they? Like, what what is Rooster's actual name? See, you, you, you don't really know. It's just, <laughs> yeah, it's, just, we... it's just Rooster. That's it. What? Shoot, why did I just draw a blank? Come on, remember his name. <laughs> they just call him Rooster the whole movie. Yeah. Um, was it Bobby? No, no, Bobby's the other guy. No, um, well, Bob, that, that's not even his real name. It's like Robert something, right? But yeah. They just call him Bob. Yeah. yeah, something like that. But, yeah. He's bland and forgettable, and that's kind of the fun of him. Yeah, well, I mean, like I said, you get their co their code names, and like there were so many freaking pilots in this movie. Like at least, like like I said, um, it's tough to remember everyone's name. You just remember their pilot names, and then that's all you really need to know, though. To yeah. be fair, like I mean, Maverick actually gets called Pete a lot this time around because before it was always just Maverick, 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 and now he's just like Pete. So um, I think it's maybe because he's not, you know, pi well. He's more established, I think. In right, this movie. right. Yeah, he's more established. He's a legend around it. And, um, Iceman was admiral at this point because, like, Iceman was just he was just that good. Um, they um, did a really good job, I thought, with uh, the Val Kilmer cameo too. Cause, right, because Val Kilmer's obviously had like throat cancer and everything. And did they say what's wrong with Iceman in the movie, or is it the same? Yeah, thing? Um, it, was, it was some sort of cancer thing. He was yeah. losing his voice too, which you know, if you're familiar with what's going on with Val Kilmer, he had throat cancer a few years ago, lost his voice, so he's got like um one of those things. If you watch that documentary, Val, um, that's on Amazon. It's a really good immersive documentary because what Val Kilmer did. Uh, so he basically filmed everything his whole entire life and just had thousands upon thousands upon thousands of hours of just videotapes just while he was on films. He just filmed it all himself. Like, he filmed every day. And so they took that together and put a little documentary about his life. Now, it wasn't... It was just kind of personal stuff, so they just kind of all just, like, put it together. And it was really fascinating going through, like, his life, through his career. Um, his son came in and did some narrations for it all. And then you see Valve back then versus Val now. It was a really fascinating documentary. So the way they incorporated Val Kilmer into this thing uh, was pretty good. Like I said, he's um, he can't really talk much. And obviously they showcase that in the movie. Like it's a comedic scene where uh, he, he meets up. Like Iceman's been the one who's been keeping an eye on Mavericks. Because Maverick, you know, he does things that kind of screw up a little bit. But Iceman's kind of like a safety net. So it really goes to show that that like friendship really was formed in that first Top Gun movie. Like, the rivals to, like, you know, best friends. Um, some would say more. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you know homoeroticism in this uh, sequel. Yeah, like, because the original, it's... It's 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 quite there. Uh, this one you don't really get that as much. Like, actually, you don't really get it at all, come to think of it. Like, maybe it was just the 80s. Um, but you don't really have characters who are just... I mean, the only characters really trying to sleep with each other is Maverick and uh, the... Well, the girl who was actually the Admiral's daughter that they mentioned at the very beginning of the first Top Gun. When you have, like, 36 years of, like, jokes made about something, they're probably just, like, you know, guys that you can be like, oh. <laughs> right, 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 right. But you do feel, like I, like, I still feel like there's still that... It kind of there in the one scene that he has with Maverick, because you really feel like the, the two characters still, like, really care about each other. Um, and, like, one of the big spoilers in the movie... Uh, Iceman does pass away, like he, but he did get the one scene, which was a really nice uh, scene. It was funny. It was like um, it was emotional. And then like his passing comes, and it's like even like I'm a little bit like mm, it, it feels it's kind of sad just to see Iceman kind of pass away because you know it's a sign that everybody gets older. But like I said, Val Kilmer's role was influent. Like his character, while not in the movie very much, uh, plays an impact for sure on like kind of everything that happens. He's the one who gets Maverick back into Top Gun and is essential in helping Maverick kind of let go of his past guilt with what happened with Goose. So, yeah. Um, I'm not, is there anything else you two want to add to the movie? Like, is you have a favorite part or just the aerial sequences? Oh, the aerial sequences were phenomenal. Oh, they were so good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I, I thought the rooster and uh, top Maverick, you know, scenes were pretty good in the movie, too. Because um, you can tell, right, Maverick has a hard time trusting him, I think, mostly because of the drama from the first movie. With Goose and, and all that. And, and then... he keeps telling himself, you know, Ma Rooster wasn't ready, but I think, you know, it's kind of clear we know he was just saying that. Right, and plus he made a promise to his mom not to, like, let him fly. That's why he took his papers away, so. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, like, there's some interesting drama there. It wasn't exactly, like, because I know going to the movies, like, okay, you think it's just, oh, I blame you for my dad's death. Um, it's not fully that, it's more so him just, like, 
him grounding him and being overprotective. Yeah, being grounded and overprotective over the whole situation. So, yeah, like I said, I quite enjoyed this movie. Um, I think it's better than the original. Uh, it doesn't have as quite as many as many memorable cheesy lines. Maybe the soundtrack's not quite as memorable. There's some good soundtrack in here, and like obviously they bring back Danger Zone and the Top Gun anthem, of course, which are great, uh, great throwbacks. Um, nice bits of fan service in there. Uh, great Balls of Fire is brought back, which is kind of like a, a triggering PTSD moment for Maverick. Oh, that was a great scene, too. Right. Yeah. Pain, so. Paying homage. No, they do a pretty good job paying homage, but yeah, it doesn't get but too out of hand. But pushing it into its own, like, direction. And, like, you, like, I, I feel like you could go into this movie not necessarily having seen the original, or if maybe if you have years ago, you're still going to be fine and kind of grasp everything that happened. Because uh, it does mostly, like, pretty much stand on its own with, like, certain elements that are, like, callbacks to it. Um, but like I said, this is a very respectful sequel, better than the original. Like, I mean, obviously like some, like there's kind of like Joseph Kosinski also was responsible for making Tron Legacy, which I thought was a good legacy sequel as well, like set years later. Although I think this is a better movie than Tron Legacy ended up being. But like I said, the talent was there in the directing style. Um, the opening felt like straight out of a 1980s movie, like with the credits and everything. I, I just yeah, really, cinematography is great. Yeah, honestly. cinematography is great. Like I said, this is a, like those wide screen shots kind of randomly too throughout it, make it look older and stuff. It, it, yeah, it's really good. Yeah. yeah, like I said, this is a very solid uh, sequel. Um, it's one of the best movies I've seen all year. And uh, if you're a Top Gun fan, you're gonna love this thing. Um, even if you're not a fan of the original, I think yeah, I didn't movie... really like the original that much. I thought this was great. So. Right, somebody who wasn't entirely a 100 percent fan of it, like this could win you over. Like it. Yeah, because the problem I always have with the original, right, is just, it's so cheesy, and... <laughs> That's what makes it awesome. I mean, I, I don't know. I, 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 it, there's better cheesy movies, though. You know, you could watch, like, View to a Kill or something. I okay, can't that's, that's the same pretty, uh, That's a pretty you know, entertaining uh, That's a movie. better cheesy movie. Right, well, uh, like I said, Top Gun was the biggest How movie. do you score? Um, It's in the nines, Yeah, I, I want to say. I think I'd give this probably, like, 9.4. I think it's the best movie of the year, so... I'm trying to think. Um, maybe I have to watch it again. But like, I was. I like, think I like this more than Batman. Batman was really. Batman good I've seen a few times now, so it's like had time to grow. I mean, I gotta like watch this thing more than once and yeah. like see how it like. You know. No, these are initial reviews. You don't get time to think. If you think you're dead. God damn it! You're right. <laughs> You're right, you're right, you're yeah, right. Yeah, there we but, go, there's a plug there. There's a plug right there. But anyways, uh, thank you so much, gentlemen, for uh, joining me. Do you have any uh, future time. movies you want to plug or review? I know you wanted to talk, do the X-Men ones coming at, up. At some point, I'm yeah. going to be out of town uh, next week. So, um, What but, else is new coming out? Well, um, we can talk Jurassic. Well, oh, Jesus. Jurassic Park, oh, Jurassic Jesus. World. Not yes, Jurassic Dominion. Uh, the last four were just so wonderful. <laughs> course but yes. uh yeah that's all i gotta say thank you two for joining me so much uh go see top gun maverick it's Good. pretty fucking sweet and uh get your yeah. aviators get your aviators on standby of course if you have a top gun jacket if you have a white t-shirt and top gun jacket you're gonna be the coolest uh chad walking into the theater that's how i felt um uh, everyone just like i saw a few people just give me nods like i'm like yeah fuck yeah <laughs> yeah so uh yeah top gun we didn't call each other up and and say we're wearing aviators it just happened magically no, 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 I, I, I straight up just said, I'm dressing to this. I have waited years to dress up as Maverick going to a movie, and this is finally my time to shine. He was born for this. This movie, this is Sean's purpose in life, was to see a second Top Gun film in theaters. Dressed as Maverick. Dressed so, as Maverick. He's yeah. completed his life goal. Exactly. Now uh, now I can die. All right. Um, <laughs> all right. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Uh, be sure to like this video, share it with your friends, subscribe to the YouTube channel for more content. And as always, take care now. Bye-bye then. And we will see you all in the next video. Peace.